Hello everyone. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've posted a video and I, I hope the past few weeks have been good to you. They've been good to me. So I uh, just want to also let you know that you know everything's fine. Um, I'm going to be bringing out more videos here soon. And I also want to welcome all the new subscribers that have uh, joined us. So I hope you find my videos useful and, uh, and fun. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, this little 5101 RAM tester that uh, I designed for one of our viewers uh, named Dan. What he wanted to know is if I could modify the 6264 RAM tester that I had uh, demonstrated in another video to work with a 5101. And of course uh, that's a pretty straightforward process, it really didn't take a lot to do that. but. I really wanted to design something more than just a dedicated RAM tester like I did with the 6264. Um, so what we have here is a PIX 16F, oh I've got it upside down, <laughs> uh, PIX 16F 887 microcontroller which can be programmed to pretty much test any IC that you want to plug in here. So let's take a look at the tester, its layout, and why I did what I did. Now this cobbled together power supply over here is supplying 5 volts to the tester, but you can also supply up to 12 volts via these connections right here which run through this 5 volt regulator. The PIX16F887 can be programmed with most microchip programmers and most importantly with the PICKIT2, which is why I decided to go with this microcontroller versus a more modern one. The LEDs are configured so that both the anode and the cathode are controlled by the MCU. This allows two port bits to control if a green or red LED are lit. So for example, the first LED pair are tied to port C bit 0 and port C bit 1. So to turn on the green LED, port C bit 0 is brought high while port C bit 1 is set low. To light the red LED, the bits are reversed and to turn off the LED, either both bits are set low or high. Now, an interesting note about the ZIF socket, I had to go with a 28 pin wide ZIF socket for this design since the 5101 RAM AC has a .400 footprint. So I couldn't use a .300 ZIF socket. This also means that not all the pins on the ZIF socket are tied to the MCU for the simple reason that I ran out of I.O. bits on the MCU. So this effectively limits the number of pins that can be controlled by the MCU to 24. This switch here is used as a control interface and activates a test cycle. I did make one mistake in the build. I should have placed the ZIF socket over here where the LEDs are and the LEDs over on this side where the ZIF socket is. But this is a small error and one that shouldn't cause too much trouble. Okay, let's run through a test with a known good 5101 RAM IC and then a known bad one. When the tester is first powered up, one of the LEDs in the first pair will begin blinking. This indicates the tester is working and ready to test and also indicates that the ZIF socket is not powered, allowing for the safe insertion and removal of an IC. Pushing the button starts the testing and this consists of powering up the IC under test and then progressing through four passes to test the IC. If a pass is completed with no errors, then the green LED will light up, and if the pass fails, the red will light up. The first pass writes all ones to each address and then reads the data back. Pass two writes all zeros to each address and then reads the data back. Pass three uses two counters to test with. The first counter keeps track of the address and the second counter is used to write the full range of values from zero hex to f hex. The data is read back after each write and compared. Pass 4 writes a value from 0 to F to each address over the full range of memory locations. After the write pass is completed, the data is then read back and compared. This test is geared more towards data retention over a period of time. As you can see, this known good RAM IC is testing good. Now I'll put in a bad IC and run the test again. Yep, it's a dead RAM IC for sure. That's pretty much it for operating the tester. It's a pretty simple design to only tell you if a RAM IC is good or bad. 
The inclusion of a programming port means you can take this base unit and write code to test any IC up to 24 pins. I'm planning on expanding on this basic design to include the full 28 pin range and integrate a display to provide more in-depth information on the IC being tested. Well, I think that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me. Please, you know, I, I welcome questions. I, I want to help you uh, solve the problems that you're facing. And uh, be sure to rate, comment, and uh, subscribe. Uh, take care, have a good day, and don't worry, be happy. Yeah, okay, I had to throw that in there. Why, why not? Oh, look what we got here. There she is. What you doing, baby? Huh? What you doing? You're trying to get into stuff, aren't you? I can see you want to get over there and get into something. I can see you want to, but I'm not going to let you. Kind of hard to do a video when you're being pestered by things like this. The pin layout for the 16F AC... Blah, 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 blah. Tongue tied there. I'm thinking, can you see the smoke?